let's uh, let's bring in our good friend Ryan Valentine now to talk some CFL football because it is a Flame Tech Football Friday. How you doing, uh, CFL Horseman? I'm good, man. It's been a while. Been a it's while been far since too we've long. Been able to have a chat. Yeah, since too we've long. been able been able to spar. Hey, I enjoyed your yeah. uh, your breakdown of Calgary Stampeders training camp uh, on three down the other day. But just a couple things first. What's the Olympic sport that you think you would be best at and might even, might, might meddle in? Uh, are they adding sitting to the Olympics anytime soon? <laughs> you look like a caber, caber tosser they, like they do in the... I'm really uh, good at that. Well, yeah, I've got like, I'm three bills. So like, it's not, there aren't a lot of Olympic sports that I'm going to be running into, um, you know, or running at all. Uh, oh. But I, I like the idea of like a, a sitting or like a binge watching. Um, I'd be really good at that. I feel like I could gold medal in, in binge watching. Um you know, general laziness. I mean, I even have a sloth on my shirt today. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I could see, you, I could I see you jumping off that five meter board with a nice cannonball. I could see you yeah, on the, yeah, on like the Rod the Peterson diving Olympic. team. Yeah, diving. yeah I, I saw those on Facebook the other day, the, the jumping and catching a ball on your way into the pool. Um, you know, I, I could do pretty well at that. Ryan, let's delve into it. People are getting very excited about the Canadian Football League kicking off next week. What is, uh, let's just look back for a second on Calgary Stampeders training camp. I said you wrote a great article on it on three down. Their cuts were made yesterday, their final cuts. What's your take on Stamps camp so far? Uh, well, apparently Huff and Dave disagreed with me entirely uh, because in my, in my write-up, I thought Trey Williams looked great. Um, I thought Dakota, Dakota Prukop was going to get the backup QB job, uh, and both of those guys were cut yesterday. Um, the the few times I've seen Stamps Camp, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that they're trying to find. They're trying to find a, a backup running back. They're trying to replace Nick Arbuckle in that QB2 spot. Uh, they need help at defensive end. They haven't got anybody with any experience at defensive end. Um, and so there's a lot of questions heading into this camp. But the one thing I know about the Stampeders is that throughout this Huffnagel era, they've been able to answer those questions every season. Um, every season, it seems we go in and it's halfway through the year, there's the question of, or at the beginning of the year, it's the question of who's going to step up and be the guy for the Calgary Stampeders. And halfway through the year, it's, oh, this is the rookie that's going to tear you apart this week. So I think over and over and over again, we see the Stampeders restock the cupboards in a way that that is unmatched across the CFL since Huffnagel took over here in Calgary. Absolutely, right. I mean, across the league, there's a lot of new faces in, uh, well, in every in every camp, every area. And, and that's why it's kind of hard to, to put uh, any sort of predictions through. You don't even know who these guys are. And the guys that are the guys are now two years older. And if you were the guy, you were 30 years old two years ago. Now you're 32. That's a big, huge difference. But uh, sorry, uh, my, my question is, I, I'm hearing across the league with so many new faces to the CFL in camp that uh, tempo is kind of an issue. I've been down at the rider practices a couple times, and I, I noticed it right away. Uh, what's... what's uh, What's uh, the Calgary camp been like? Because, you know, there's probably a lot more vets. The Huffnagel area, there's already that system in place, and guys kind of know it. I'm just, uh, um, I, I think that's going to play you a huge role. Well, I think for me, what I'm seeing is, is I mean, I, the practices I've been able to attend, because, of course, I still have the day job, so I try and get there on the weekends. Um, but the practices I've been able atten to attend have been pretty drill pretty drill based but what we haven't seen is um dave dickinson standing in front of the media saying yeah i shut it down because my guys weren't trying very hard today um and we have seen that at a couple other practices uh, across the league where coaches have addressed uh, the media to say that they weren't happy with the intensity of the day and uh, they felt like some players weren't up to par so what we're not seeing that in calgary and i know that that's also maybe a piece of of who Dave Dickinson is. Uh, I think he's not the first guy to address that with the media in that way. Um, so I, I don't know whether or not we will hear that from Dave. Uh, he'll, he'll definitely say it after a game, but you haven't heard it very often after practice where he criticizes the team on their effort level. Um, but again, Dickinson and Huffnagel have been here for so long, been in charge for so long, that that culture is very much per pervasive throughout the locker room. Guys know what's expected of them, and the rookies who show up into camp learn very quickly what's expected of them. 
So from the viewers, there are many. They're loving the CFL talk. And by the way, everybody that's watching on the streams, if you enjoy what we're doing on this Flame Tech Football Friday, hit share. Tell all your friends because the CFL uh, would appreciate the coverage. I know Darren Workman in Salt Lake City says, Rod, don't run any sprints. Achilles tendons are exploding lately up there in Canada. Don't worry. Pretty sure that's not going to happen. Uh, Dominic D., Says Prukop released, surprise me, Dakota Prukop. We'll get to that in a minute. Ryan Gregory says, hey, Ryan, great name, by the way. With all the Achilles injuries that happen in camp, do you believe lots of players are going to go down throughout the season? So listen, let's split these questions into two for you, Mr. Ballantyne. One, the quarterbacks. We got to go back on that because Bo's hurt. Prukop's gone. Our buckle's in Toronto. You got the Canadian Michael Connor there has made the team. The former Argo, like... What if Bo's not ready to go? What are they going to do? I think Bo's going to be ready. I mean, Bo played with a lingering shoulder for a year and a half as a throwing. Like, you know, the the whole motion of throwing, he played through that kind of injury um, before. Right now, it's a little bit of a groin injury. And if there's one thing we know about Bo Levi Mitchell's game, it's not that he's the mobile quarterback that's going to hurt you with his legs. Um, you know, I think if we're putting a plus minus – uh, or an over under on his rushing yards for the season, I'd say maybe 18, um, you know, for the whole year. Uh, I, I think that Bo is, um, would be playing if he had to. And this backup quarterback job and this backup quarterback battle is an essential piece of the Stampeders' uh, future. They need to know who's next, they need to know who will be able to take over the reins if Bo suffers another injury like he did uh, in the previous season when Nick Arbuckle was able to take over. So honestly, I think the more reps the backups can get in this scenario, the better. Um, but with Michael O'Connor and, and uh, Jake Meyer, what I have seen at camp is that, you know, those throws beyond 15 yards downfield have been a little off target, not quite the, you know, the ropes that you would see um, from a, a more experienced quarterback. So that, uh, stresses me out a little bit, um, but I'm not going to also sit in this chair and say, well, from what I saw and question John Huffnagel and, and Dave Dickinson's judgment when it comes to quarterback talent. Uh, Abu, I want to go to you first because you're a guest here as well, and then we'll come to Ryan on the injuries thing. The number one story has been injuries and Achilles. So what do you think? You've been through 10 pro training camps. Not surprised, you know. You, 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 not, not surprised at all. Not, not, not even a little bit. I mean, guys didn't know they were playing this year. The, the CFL, you're not making millions of dollars, so you have to have another job. Or, or you get paid well enough so that your money makes it until May. And then training camp starts in June. So uh, guys weren't professional football players for two years they were you know gas station attendants and financial planners and you know uh, uh, other things so i'm not surprised that uh, e e even in the slightest so many achilles those is is that's kind odd of, ki kind of odd it's kind of like when we had all those broken legs and you didn't really in 08 or something <laughs> it was 2008 good memory yes yeah, yeah, yeah but ryan what's your take on the injuries and do you expect it to continue into the regular season yeah, I expect we'll see a lot of injuries this year. I think with the Achilles specifically, and, and again, I'm not a pro athlete, so I can't say, but I wonder if it's the cuts that the guys have to make that put pressure on their leg in a different way that they're not used to making or don't necessarily make as often in training. Um, you know, when you're running on the mm -hmm. treadmill, when you're staying fit, when you're lifting weights, you know, are your footwork drills as heavy a piece of your workout as they would be uh, in training camp. And, and you got to wonder if that's maybe why guys are blowing out Achilles. Uh, Charlie Power here in Calgary uh, lost for the year, and uh, that's why they re-signed Cal uh, Calvin McCarty out of retirement. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of injuries this year, especially without a preseason game. I think we're, we're going to see a lot of guys go down in the first two weeks when live bullets start flying, especially. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a lot of those guys that got released and cut late in camp, like we saw uh, yesterday here in Calgary with 16 players getting cut, those guys could end up back on the roster here uh, in the first couple of weeks if, uh, if everything doesn't stay healthy. And I understand to a point trying to cut down on contact in, in training camp and stuff, but... Again, I haven't seen two. I've seen two practices, but the, you've got to condition your body to hit, to hit, to hit, to hit, to hit, to hit seventy times 
in a week, in, in a game, and they're not doing that. That's not what I'm seeing. They put the pads on, they run ten plays, and then they put the pads on again in in, in three four days. You cannot condition your body. Not, I'm not talking about your head. I'm talking about your shoulders, your Achilles, your knees. Those all need to be strengthened, and the only you, you can't do that with weight. You got to do it by smashing into other people. As dumb as it sounds or maybe it doesn't sound dumb, you've got to practice football to get better at football. Uh, and, and that's not what I saw. I, I, in case you're getting a hint, uh, I, I was significantly disappointed in what, what I saw at the practices that I, that, 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 that I saw. I feel like I was, I was being cheated out of, out, out of, uh, out of professional Interesting. football. Interesting. Hey, we've only got two minutes. They tell me. This is going fast, Ryan. Um, so too early wouldn't you say for predictions i mean we we're gonna make them next week on our preview show but i have no idea how this is going to turn out over the next three four months uh i think if i were making a prediction right now i'd probably say that the stampeders will go undefeated and win the gray cup of course, um, you, i think you other would. than that uh other than that i have no idea how the rest of the league is going <laughs> to shape out uh but uh but yeah i mean i i think the uh the stampeders are going to be a good team they always are um, you know, Edmonton may or may not challenge in the West. Uh, Saskatchewan's got a good team, and, and you can't go wrong with the Dickinson at the helm. Um, so uh, they should be uh, they should be in the mix. Certainly, um, BC, I'm not all that concerned about. Winnipeg's a good team, but without Andrew Harris, what are they going to be? And, uh, you know, out East, it's, it's just who's going to lose in the Grey Cup. <laughs> I love it. You coming in and just stirring it, taking a page from my playbook. I've taught you well, young man. Uh, Ryan, keep it up. Let's do it throughout the season. I always appreciate the time and uh, everything that you're doing for the CFL. Thank you. Pleasure as always. Happy to be here. Thanks, Ron. From the uh, CFL Horseman and 3 downnationcom Calgary Stan Peters, blogger, podcaster, and chief punk, Ryan Ballantyne. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.